Ukraine's operation in the Kursk region has shown that surprises are back in war. The Telegraph's deputy editor Dominic Nichols analyzes Ukraine's tactics and what Kiev is trying to achieve. The journalist points out that Kiev's troops currently hold about 1,000 square kilometers of territory inside Russia. In the last seven days, they have seized more territory than Russia has in the last year. The Kremlin was forced to declare a state of emergency in the Kursk and Belgorod regions. Moscow has left most of the border unguarded, a stunningly stupid and arrogant decision. And Ukrainians know that Russian military is at its weakest when it has to react quickly. The Kremlin's favoured rigid top-down model of leadership, which slows decision-making and discourages independent thinking and action, knows only mass and exhaustion, the report says. The author emphasizes that the Russian army cannot adapt to the tempo on the battlefield. According to him, Ukraine's tactics and the surprise with which they were applied may not last even a week, but this is not necessary. The Ukrainian armed forces have already proven that such things can be done and can use experience in other areas. The journalist says that in this case, Kyiv's ground forces act as a naval strike group, which has the ability to strike along and across the coast. The enemy never knows exactly where the next strike will be. This is an effective way for Ukraine to keep Russia on edge. Putin should also be concerned that Ukraine has demonstrated the ability to use combined arms maneuvers in which tanks, infantry and engineers can work together without turning into a chaotic mess. The Observer emphasizes that this will give confidence not only to Kyiv's troops and the entire Ukrainian society, but also to Western sponsors. They will be able to see a return on their investment in military equipment. If the Russian army can be shown to be beaten in the field, then, amid increasingly loud calls for negotiations, Ukraine could plan another surprise attack and thereby strengthen its trump cards. Ukraine may receive JSSM air-to-surface missiles for F-16s from the US. Washington is open to such supplies, according to Politico. According to one White House staff member, a decision on the missile supply has not yet been made, as the Biden administration is working through complicated details. These involve checking the transfer of sensitive technologies and ensuring that Ukrainian aircraft can launch such missiles. According to a Politico source, significant work will be required before the missiles can be supplied. In particular, it must be confirmed that the aircraft available to Ukraine, including the F-16s, can use JSSM for targets at a range of approximately 370 kilometers. Two sources informed the journalists that the Pentagon is already working with Ukraine on these technical issues. At the same time, the Pentagon declined to comment on whether the department has approved the supply of JSSM to Ukraine. We consider a range of options to meet Ukraine's security assistance requirements, however we have no information to provide," said Pentagon spokesperson Jeff Jurgensen. According to Politico, JSSM missiles, developed by the American company Lockheed Martin, were first used in the early 2000s. The US has rarely used them in combat. These missiles have been provided to only a few close US allies, including Poland, Australia, and Finland. Japan and the Netherlands signed agreements to purchase the missiles in July, with delivery expected in the coming years. Germany, Greece, Romania, and Denmark are also negotiating the purchase of these missiles. JASM missiles can destroy targets within a range of 370 kilometers. There is also a modified version of the missile that can reach targets at a distance of 980 kilometers. If Ukraine receives JSSM missiles, they would be the most long-range missiles in its arsenal. So far, allies have only provided Ukrainian defenders with missiles capable of reaching targets within a range of 300 kilometers. It's worth noting that the US has not lifted restrictions on Ukraine for strikes on Russian territory. Specifically, Ukrainian forces are not allowed to use long-range weapons for this purpose. However, Washington's position may be influenced by the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region.